November 23rd, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Revelation chapter 12 from the New Testament. Then a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and with the moon under her feet, and on her head was a crown of twelve stars. She was pregnant and was screaming in labor pain, struggling to give birth. Then another sign appeared in heaven, a huge red dragon that had seven heads and ten horns, and on its heads were seven diadem crowns. Now the dragon's tail swept away a third of the stars in heaven and hurled them to the earth. Then the dragon stood before the woman who was about to give birth so that he might devour her child as soon as it was born. So the woman gave birth to a son, a male child, who is going to rule over all the nations with an iron rod. Her child was suddenly caught up to God and to his throne. And she fled into the wilderness where a place had been prepared for her by God, so she could be taken care of for 1,260 days. Then war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. But the dragon was not strong enough to prevail, so there was no longer any place left in heaven for him and his angels. So that huge dragon, the ancient serpent, the one called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world, was thrown down to the earth and his angels along with him. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, The salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the ruling authority of his Christ have now come. Because the accuser of our brothers and sisters, the one who accuses them day and night before our God, has been thrown down. But they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives so much that they were afraid to die. Therefore, you heavens rejoice in all who reside in them. But woe to the earth and the sea, because the devil has come down to you. He is filled with terrible anger, for he knows that he only has a little time. Now when the dragon realized that he had been thrown down to the earth, he pursued the woman who had given birth to the male child. But the woman was given the two wings of a giant eagle so that she could fly out into the wilderness to the place God prepared for her, where she is taken care of away from the presence of the serpent for a time, times, and a half a time. Then the serpent spouted water like a river out of his mouth after the woman in an attempt to sweep her away by a flood. But the earth came to her rescue. The ground opened up and swallowed the river that the dragon had spewed from his mouth. So the dragon became enraged at the woman and went away to make war on the rest of her children, those who keep God's commandments and hold to the testimony about Jesus. And the dragon stood on the sand of the seashore. God, in Revelation, you show us a few more facets of Satan that we're going to be going up against, especially during end of times. Right now, we're dealing with Satan. Uh, we sadly don't give him enough credit for all of the terror that he causes and all the the problems he causes here in the world. Um, part of it's good to not acknowledge him, not to a full extent, but part of it is we need to be aware that he does exist, that that evil is truly there. There's also some pieces about Satan in Revelation that we're not quite sure about. Uh, again, with a lot of things having to do with end of times. Satan fell from grace before Adam and Eve sinned. Uh, we know that that's why he was hanging out in the garden, not being very nice. Um, but we also know that he was part of your heavenly realm, is part of your heavenly realm. Job talks about it a couple different places that it says when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan also came along uh, with them. Um, so we actually see that uh, he still had position up in your heavenly realm. And then this passage in Revelation talks about his being thrown down to earth. Now, some people believe that this has already happened and that's why all this destruction is happening here on earth. Uh, other people believe that it hasn't happened yet. Again, it doesn't really matter one way or the other because we simply need to acknowledge uh, your sovereignty, uh, your power, and your control over everything. And I hate to say this, but we are a little bit like Satan. Satan wanted to be God. 
And truly, especially before we're saved, we want to be our own gods. We want to build up our own kingdom, have our own entitlements, have our own power. We want to be our own God. So we're not too far off of the same desire that Satan had in pushing you off the throne and, and taking control. God, even though I don't want to compare any of the people that you've created to Satan, not in the slightest, um, but I do know that that desire to have your own kingdom and your own power and your own control is, is overwhelming at times. That desire to choose what we want, what we selfishly want over what you want for us, which you've uh, created us for, uh, is something that's very hard to give up. And you're very clear with us in the Bible that we have to give up everything that we want to get everything, meaning everything that you have desired for us, that you've created for us. Um, and Satan never wanted to give any of that up. And in fact, he continues to fight for it as we speak. And as we read about Revelation, we'll continue to, to the end of days uh, when his final destruction happens. God, our desire to want control, our desire for our own kingdom is sinful incredibly sinful our desire to be belligerent and disobedient to what you've called us to do what you've asked us to do what you've commanded us to do uh, is nothing but sin in our lives god i just ask that you come into my life in the pieces that i'm still holding on to control for for whatever reason selfish reason that you just tighten my grip from those that you teach me to be dependent upon you, that you teach me that your ways are better than my ways, always. That there is absolutely no reason for me to want to be in control of anything. One, I know from past history, I'll just mess it up. Uh, two, you have a much better plan for me as well as everyone else listening to this video. That if we would just give up our control and our arrogance at thinking we know better than you do, which is truly what it comes down to, that the life you have planned for us is so much better than anything that we could ever possibly imagine. I was thinking in a church this morning. I get to this point where I think our relationship between you and I couldn't get any better. Like I'm madly in love with you. I love talking about you. I, I'm passionate about uh, reading about uh, your word. It doesn't mean that I don't have more to learn, but I'm like, oh my gosh, our relationship just couldn't get any better. And then something will happen in my life usually something that uh, is either crazy awesome or something that I would consider bad and my relationship with you deepens it deepens past a point that I ever imagined it could possibly venture into you've shown me things in this world that I didn't think were possible you've shown me true miracles in this world you've brought joy to my life unlike anything that I ever experienced just on my own and it only came because you taught me how to let go of the control I was trying to keep on my life and allow myself to be dependent upon you, giving you all the glory and all the honor for your sovereignty in my life and the entire world. That letting go of control now also plays out when I disciple people, allowing me to not make it about me, that they have to do this and they have to do this and this has to happen this way because <laughs> uh, it won't. I know it will happen in your timing, God. So I'm a lot more relaxed doing discipleship work. I'm still black and white about stuff, but I'm a lot more relaxed in the sense that I just wait to hear your voice. I do what you tell me to do uh, and we move forward from there. And it's amazing. People tend to listen a lot better when it's you speaking to them. Uh, than when it's me speaking. So God, allow us to take uh, wisdom from the fact of what we see Satan doing in all of these passages, trying to gain control, trying to gain power away from you, trying to do things his own way. And in the end, we know that he is ultimately destroyed for what he tried to do. Allow us in our own lives to realize that we are trying to do something very similar, trying to gain control and be gods of our own world. God, allow us to be obedient and empty our lives at your feet. Allow our lives being to be filled with you, with your love and your grace and your mercy for other people. In your son's name I pray. Amen.